Okay, so for 6.2, we're going to learn about the law of cosines. Um, in 6.1, we we'll learn about the law of sines, where how to solve a triangle when you're given a uh, side angle angle, angle side angle, or side side angle, the ambiguous case. Uh, but what if the information is different than that? So um, could we use the law of sines to solve either of these triangles here? Um, so we would be looking for like a side angle pair. So we'd like to have side C to, uh, to be able to use the law of sines, which we don't have here. Um, and we don't have two angles to get the third to give us a side angle pair. Um, and this one, we have side, side, side. So no angles means using the relationship between uh, the sine of an angle and the side that it goes with. It doesn't make any sense. So um, we can't, we can't uh, use the law of sines here. But... Uh, we are going to learn the law of cosines, and these are two triangles where we can use the law of cosines. So you have this other relationship between the sides and angles of an oblique triangle. It's called the law of cosines, uh, where you have a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Um, the thing to make note of here is that this angle matches with this side in all three versions of this. Also, um, that this beginning part looks a whole lot like the Pythagorean theorem, right? And it is uh, just minus this error term. So um, the law of cosines, I only have one of these versions memorized and I just like uh, change the letters, you know, if I need to. So um, anyway, we can use that to solve these two triangles. So we're gonna do that first. We'll solve this triangle um, number one here where I'm gonna draw a picture first. So this is A, B, and C. Uh, C is 15 degrees, side A is 10, side B is three. So you notice that this is side angle side. Um, so we can't use the law of sines. So we are gonna use the law of cosines to do this. My preference is to Actually, we'll get into that in a minute. So this statement says that which one should you solve first? It does matter um, if you're going to switch to using the law of signs, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, so um, to be able to use the law of signs, which is what I would like to do, um, I need to solve for side C. So I'm going to use the law of cosines to do that. So you have c squared equals uh, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of big C. I should have to use all the letters here. Um, so we have c squared equals 100 plus 9 minus 2 times 10 times 3 times the cosine of 15 degrees and then so c would be the square root of all of that stuff so you'll type that into your calculator and get uh, something like 7.14 so that's side c so for me um, i would then switch to the law of sines because I now have this side angle matching pair. And so, and the law of sines is a lot easier to work with than the law of cosines for me. But I have to choose this wisely because if I choose now to move to A, I should not use the law of sines. Um, thinking about this and looking at this triangle, which one of these angles would be obtuse if there was an obtuse angle? It would be A. So I don't wanna use the law of sines to find A first because that is, uh, it would give me, the law of sines, remember, will give you an acute angle. So I switch to the law of sines and I'm gonna find the smallest, uh, smaller angle first. Because then I can just use subtraction to find angle A, right? So um, if I, chose to continue using the law of cosines, it wouldn't matter. I could just do the law of cosines in whatever order I wanted to, uh, finding A or B next. But if I'm gonna to switch to the law of sines, 
I either need to find A and then do uh, 180 minus that angle that I get, or just find B. Um, so that was really confusing. Let me say that again. If there's an obtuse angle in this triangle, it is angle A. Therefore, the law of sines will not return it without doing something else. So that you don't have to think about that, go ahead and solve for the smaller side, smaller angle first. Or if you don't want to think about it at all, just do the law, of, if you start with the law of cosines, finish with the law of cosines, and the order doesn't matter. So, since I am going to switch, order does matter. When I switch, I'm going to find the smaller angle first, so I'm going to find B. So, when I do that, I have the sine of 15 degrees over 7.14 equals the sine of B over 3. So 3 times the sine of 15 degrees over 7.14 equals the sine of B. I need to get B by itself, so I'm going to take sine inverse on both sides. So sine inverse of 3 sine of 15 degrees over 7.14 equals B. So B is 6.24. Degrees, and then thirdly to find a subtract. So you're going to do 180 minus a, a b minus c, so 180 minus 6.24 minus 15, so you get 158.76. Probably just round that to 8, 158.8, um, and then 6.2. And this makes sense. The biggest side has the biggest angle. The smallest side has the smallest angle. All right, so a little bit different than that um, is when you have side, side, side. So sketch a picture. So we have A, B, and C. A is 10, B is 12, C is 16. Um, when we do this, we need to just find one of the um, angles first. Order does matter if you're going to switch to law of signs. In this case, um, find the biggest angle first. So you would be finding, in this case, C, um, because the law of cosines will give you that obtuse angle if it is obtuse. So solving for C first with the law of cosines will give you a side angle matching pair and it will accomplish that C would be the obtuse angle if there is one. So that's what I'm going to do first. Law of cosines to find C. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of big C. We're going to just solve this. So 16 squared equals 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 10 times 12 times the cosine of C, which is the thing we're trying to solve for, is that 256 is equal to 100 plus 144, so 244. 244 minus 120 times 2 is what, 240? Uh, cosine C. And then I'm going to subtract 244 from both sides. So, um, get, what is that, 12 equals negative 240 cosine C. So negative 12 over 240 equals the cosine of C. And then do cosine inverse on both sides to get C by itself. And you get that C is equal to 92.9 degrees. 
So it is obtuse, um, so that's good. And then I am going to switch to the law of sines. And now order doesn't matter because I already have the obtuse angle if there is one, right? And then in a triangle, only one angle can be obtuse. Um, C is it, so it doesn't matter if I find A or B first. I'm going to go for A. So we have the sine of 92.9 degrees over 16 equals the sine of A over 10. So 10 times the sine of 92.9 degrees over 16 equals the sine of A. Take sine inverse on both sides. And then type that into your calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode. Um, A is equal to 38.6 maybe. My calculator is dead, but I think that's right. Um, and then the third thing that I would do is just subtract to get B. So B is going to be 180 minus C minus A, so 180 minus 92.9 minus 38.6, um, and that is 48.5. And that's how you solve a side, side, side. So for side, 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 you want to find the biggest angle with the law of cosines first. Then you can switch to law of sines and the order doesn't matter. In a uh, side angle side, find that third side first with the law of cosines. Um, and then the smallest angle using the law of sines. So let's see what I think we should go through here. This is the last one. I guess we'll just do this one. Um, use the law of sines and or the law of cosines as necessary to solve this triangle. Okay, so I'm going to sketch a picture first, figure out what kind of triangle I'm working with here. So this is side angle A, angle B, angle C. A is 100 degrees. I don't know little a. Little b is 4, little c is 1. So this is side angle side, which means I need to use the law of cosines. So that's what I'm going to do first to find little a. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. So a squared equals 4 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times 4 times 1 times the cosine of 100 degrees. 16 and 1 minus 8 cosine of 100. So a is going to be the square root of that. 4.3. Alright, and then again, you could continue with the law of cosines without regard to order at all. I'm going to switch to the law of sines, so I'm going to find C first because it will be acute. Also, actually, it doesn't matter here because A is obtuse, so the order doesn't matter. It would be the obtuse one, but just as general practice, when you're switching to the law of sines, um, go ahead here and find the smaller angle. So that would be step two, um, law of sines to find C, the smaller one. So the sine of 100 degrees over 4.3 equals the sine of C over 1. So the sine of 100 degrees over 4.3 equals the sine of C. Take sine inverse on both sides. And you get that C, angle C, is equal to uh, 13.5. So 
0.3. Okay, I like that it's significantly smaller than A since side C is so small. And then for B, just subtract. So do B is going to be 180 minus A minus C. So 180 minus 100 minus 13.3 is what? 66.7. So, and that's fine. Um, A and B aren't that different um, in size. So it makes some sense that A and B wouldn't be that different. Uh, the side lengths are not that different. So it makes sense that the angles would not be that different but they should be significantly different from angle C, and they are. So um, there are a lot more problems um, to be worked. Um, if you need more examples or um, anything, just let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, yeah. So the law of cosine is nice. Um, you can do, like I said, you could do one, two, and three. Just use the law of cosines throughout the question. Um, you don't have to switch to the log signs. Um, I like to switch to the log signs because it's easier to work with, um, but that is your call. So again, let me know if y'all need any help or any more examples.